Well, we're talking climate change, and Professor James Curran is joining us here. Of course, uh, Mr Curran, you must be obviously pleased that your report was unanimously received by Tim Walt. Um, I don't think anyone was expecting anything less than that. I think really, though, I mean, it's a, it's a big, long report. It's quite technical in places. Uh, and what I'd really like to, to sort of centre on today is putting it into layman's terms what you are proposing. And, and, and by starting that, I want to say, is, are there anything that's different from anywhere else in the world? I mean, have you come up with unique things that the Isle of Man particularly has to deal with? Or is this could be under the file of the bleeding obvious? <laughs> yeah, the, there's, I don't think there's anything very specifically unique uh, to, to the Isle of Man. You would find examples of the same kind of actions being proposed in, 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 in different places around the world. But, uh, of course, they have to be applied in a, in a customised way to the Isle of Man because every place is a little bit different. It's economic and social structures and it's political ambitions and motivations are, are, are all different in different places. So there's many common elements. There's no question about that. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, Tinwald and the Council of Ministers, uh, the government generally, have, have taken to me uh, a, a really quite inspiring approach of uh, insisting, uh, calling on, and building into their uh, a action plan that is now public uh, a really powerful. Um, set of actions around getting everyone on the island uh, to, to back this initiative. It's going to go on for some decades. It's a really big and ambitious plan. Uh, and uh, from the chief minister uh, and, and his statements in Tinwald, it's very clear that uh, ministers want everyone to be on board. Uh, and, and there's going to be quite a bit of effort put into that very early on, as far as I can see from their proposed action plan. I think that's, that's quite an unusual approach. I haven't seen that replicated um, with such conviction anywhere else. And I think that that's a really great move. And um, ho hopefully people will uh, respond to that very positively. Well, obviously, one thing that is you were going for was the changing away from the gas turbines for electricity. I mean, wind power, waves, uh, solar. We, we haven't made any inroads whatsoever. Your views on that? Yeah, uh, and I've said quite often that um, it now is a great time to start because a lot of the technologies have improved, uh, they've developed over the years, and they're now much more commercially successful. So now is a really good time actually to start moving uh, rapidly uh, on various renewable energies, be that solar or onshore wind or offshore wind, uh, and also investigate um, and keep a close watch on when other renewable technologies such as tidal stream uh, or, or wave energy or possibly even geothermal uh, might become viable as, as a, additional options to add. So yeah, it, it's a good time to start investing in, in those elements. And once you've got sufficient uh, renewable uh, electricity supply and the Isle of Man has a huge resource to tap into, then you can start doing some of the, the, the more difficult and more challenging tasks of converting all space heating on the island, uh, domestic and business premises, to uh, non-carbon uh, energy sources. That's quite a big transformation. That, that's uh, not going to be an easy one. And most countries have delayed on that. But uh, in, in my report and in the, um, the uh, government uh, response with their action plan, clearly they see that as an element that needs to be taken forward relatively rapidly. And all, then also co converting all transport and vehicles to electric energy as well. Another big transformation, but now is the time to start doing it when electrical vehicles are becoming uh, much cheaper, uh, much greater range, uh, much higher specification, much more readily available, both uh, new and second-hand markets. So I, I think there's a real advantage in actually uh, moving forward on all of those elements right now. Tell me through the fossil fuels thing. I mean, I understand about burning coal, but I mean, surely the gas is also on that list and uh, it, you know there should be no more people putting in boilers and, and things eventually if not now at all is that what you're you know you're saying that we move totally away from that sort of a uh, way of burning any fossil fuels or, or gas 
Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the report in which I made recommendations uh, and, and then also the government response recognizes that the, the, there may well be some um, fossil fuel-based emissions, some carbon emissions, some more generally greenhouse gas emissions that come 2050, it may be very, very hard uh, to reduce to zero. So you can compensate for that by increasing the amount of uh, green, greenhouse gases, or particularly carbon, that are sequestered by nature. That is absorbed by uh, peatlands locked up in peat bogs or uh, absorbed by trees and other vegetation and locked up in, in the soil and in, in, in roots and woody material. So it's important to move quickly on building up that so-called natural sequestration by restoring peatlands and planting woodlands and uh, enhancing the, uh, the performance generally of ecosystems across the island. Now, it takes some years, if not decades, uh, for, for, for those ecosystems to start functioning at their optimum uh, as you try and manage them back to a, a, a better and healthier state. Um, so it's worth doing that very, very rapidly. And that gives you some headroom uh, in later years uh, towards 2040, 2050, that there may still be some emissions that you can't reduce down to zero. But having said that, uh, the vast majority of emissions, and an awful lot of that does come from space heating, in, both in our, in, in our homes and in our businesses and offices, uh, and does come from driving vehicles as well. So those have to be driven as close as we can to zero, and that means getting rid of fossil fuel vehicles, petrol diesel vehicles, uh, and it means uh, substituting for oil-fired central heating and gas-fired central heating, and also at an appropriate point deciding what to do about gas-fired electricity generation in the power station. Okay, well, uh, there's these lots more here. Uh, we'll have a part two of this interview, so uh, Mr. P Professor Corrin, stay with us. Part two.